Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ongoy Mwangi, a Kenyan oncology nurse practicing right here in Kenya. I do videos on nursing, health, lifestyle and patient teaching as well as health education. So today I come back here to another video on cardiac failure and this is congestive cardiac failure or CCF in short. And this is quite a common condition in the cardiac field and it's a common cardiovascular disorder in the Kenyan community and our very able cardiologists are battling this condition day in day out and if you are not practicing in the general adult with surgical wing then you have encountered a patient with CCF and that's what I want us to learn about today. So CCF has to do with uh, the pump which is a heart that is failing and therefore we are going to have a few issues with the BPs and the pulse rate. So to begin with, I'll discuss the pathophysiology. The pathophysiology starts with a, a less than normal or less than ideal uh, cardiac output. And this is most definitely because of a failing heart or a failing muscle pump that pumps out the blood out of the heart to the rest of the body parts. Uh, the rest of the body part will perceive this uh, less blood pumped out of the heart and therefore means less oxygen to these tissues as probably lack of enough blood or less volume and therefore some very sensitive organs like the kidney will definitely react to try to compensate with this scenario so the kidney specifically activates two things and the first is the synthetic sympathetic nervous system while the other is the RAAS or RAS. This is the renin and the tensing aldosterone system. In this system, if you remember how it used to work, it means that uh, the kidney is trying to retain water and salt in the body by activating the system. Uh, so remember, uh, our problem already we had issues with the heart failing and most likely we had a high blood pressure and a high pulse. So this makes the problem worse and therefore there will be a lot of fluid retention in the body which ends up killing the patient by drowning. So what causes mortality and mobility in congestive cardiac failure is that drowning, drowning from within the body. Even understand CCF further, it is important to note that we have right-sided CCF and left-sided CCF. When you're talking about right-sided CCF, remember the problem was in water retention for both CCFs, but this, side, this time when it is right-sided, the water retention is mostly on the periphery. Therefore, there will be bilateral pedal edema that is splitting. The abdominal gut will be enlarging, probably with ascites, hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. The face may be puffy, Basically, the patient will be healthier than they were before they started experiencing symptoms of CCF and therefore it has to do with peripheral fluid retention. So, on the other side, when we have left-sided uh, CCF, uh, the issue is pulmonary edema or the lungs filling up with water or water being retained but now within the lung. So, definitely this is more serious and the patient will have no signs and symptoms than the other patient. So in this case, the signs and symptoms for this, the cardinal sign is a pink frothy sputum, and they will have a cough uh, because of this. Uh, then they will also have dyspnea, of course. There will be shortness of breath, and there will be apopnea. That means when they are in a sitting position or proctor position, they feel much better than when lying down. So the signs and symptoms for right-sided heart failure or congestive cardiac failure is the first one being um, there will be increasing ascites, I said in the first place. There will be jugular vein distension. This one is very classic and it could be on one side or both sides. So the one thing, if you have seen a patient with CCF and you are not able to even tell the diagnosis better, once you see the distended tubular vein, then you know this is right-sided heart failure. While for the other one, it is pink frothy sputum for the left-sided CCF. 
So the cause for right-sided heart failure is pulmonary, pulmonary hypertension that is in the first. And then we have anything else that comes from uh, this increased water retention from left-sided uh, heart failure. So if you have left-sided CCF, it could lead to right-sided CCF. And this is a common condition called pulmonary. It is quite um, a serious condition and something has to be done in the past because then this patient will present with fluid overload both from the peripheral uh, or from the periphery and in the lungs. Therefore, it is of utmost importance to ensure that you drain that much fluid as much as possible and be as safe as possible. So the diagnostic test, uh, the very first one is BNP or B-type natriuretic peptide. I don't even know whether I'm saying that right, but I'm going to put it down here in the, descri in the description box. Um, and then we also do an echocardiogram to know the ejection rate of that heart and any rate above 55 to 70 that is within normal range. But anything below 40 means that the heart is really failing and something needs to be done at first. So the ejection rate. Uh, then there will of course be a chest x-ray because a chest x-ray will be able to show how the heart is doing, the size of the heart because patients with um, cardiac failure tends to get their heart growing to a larger size. The more it fills, the larger it grows and this is the body just trying to compensate on the failing part. So yes, those are the tests that are very common. Sometimes uh, an ECG will be done, but by the time you already know that this patient has congestive cardiac failure, that will not even be necessary because you already know that there will be some abnormal training in the ECG. But for monitoring of this patient, then you must be able to monitor the ECG and know what are the abnormal things. Then the other test that is also important and significant in this one is uh, central venous pressure and this is monitored using the central vein and it is important and this is a test that is mostly done in, uh, critically in patients especially in the ICU HQ setups. So yes, that's another test that can be very significant for patients with CCF. The nursing management for congestive cardiac failure uses the, the acronym HOPE, H-O-P-E. H being elevate head of bed, so head of bed is elevated. Then O is oxygen administration. Remember we have talked about dyspnea and hypoxia, meaning the patient is not saturating well and therefore you need to supplement. Then P is for push and what are we pushing in? We are pushing in lacets or something called furosemide and morphine if prescribed to ensure that the patient is calm and to ensure that the patient's fluids in the body are drying up. So we are trying to prevent more fluid overload that could result from the situation that we have. Remember the more the, the cardiac output gets lower, the kidney activates the RAS and the RAS keeps retaining water in the body, salt and water. So that is what the key to treating this disease, basically stopping the RAS system, the renin, angiotensin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. So if this system is stopped, then there is no more fluid retention and the heart will start getting better. So yes, furosemide and, and morphine prescribed. Then the other thing, E, is eliminate what we eliminate something in the diet. And this we are eliminating is sodium and, and fluids. So you never ever give IV fluids to a cardiac patient and especially pneumocelline because this has sodium and remember sodium equals water retention. Patients with heart failure, heart failure equals heavy fluid. Heavy fluid equals patient drowning and dying from, drowning from within the body itself. So yes, it is very, very important to ensure that the water it not been retained unnecessarily and that the patient is drying up or the systems are letting the excess water go whether they are going to eliminate it by number one or an artificial tap will be put either a pigtail drain and a water seal drain especially if the water is in the lung 
or an ascetic tapping because if it is ascetic, uh, sometimes ascetics can be too bad for the patient to even sit, breathe or eat or do anything and therefore some of those drastic measures need to be taken while the patient is still hospitalized. Now this is the part of the health education about the lifestyle changes that may be needed. So lifestyle changes are needed definitely and to begin with is about food because we love food and food is us. So in the diet you have to eliminate sodium and fluids. And by sodium, I mean any salt, any table salt that you put in food, as well as any processed food because you don't know how much salt they have put in that food. Uh, so if you crave like a packet of chips, then you cannot do that, not unless you have made them at home and then they salt. However, uh, you will also not take over-the-counter medications because these are preparations that come laden with heavy sodium content. And because we do not want to risk this, then it is important to stay away from any over-the-counter medications. For example, cough syrup, and this is a trap for many because remember this patient may be coughing, may be having those symptoms that they are not able to breathe well, they have quickness of breath and they have an irritating dry cough. And probably if it's left-sided heart failure, then they also have a, pinky, a pinkish frothy sputum. So they are thinking an expectorant would help this. But no, 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 no. When it comes to congestive heart failure, no over the counter medication. It is very, very important for you as a patient to remember this. And it is very important for you as a nurse, if you have patients with CCF, to remember to teach them not to get anything over the counter. Every of their medication should be approved by their medical or healthcare provider. And this is because they will already be having a pill burden because they will be on several types of medications. Trust me, they do not need to add anything from over the counter. Whether it is pain medications like ibuprofen or paracetamol, still do not do over the counter. Let it be prescribed by your cardiologist specifically because of your failing heart. So, then the other adjustment that someone needs to make is on activities and exertion. A, you need to stay away from loud bangs, loud noises, anything that is stressful, anything that stresses your physical body is also stressful to your heart. So therefore, any physical activity that is extremely demanding on the heart should be avoided and this could be inclusive of sex. If you cannot be able to go a flight of stairs without uh, coughing or being short, uh, having shortness of breath, then you have no business having those activities that will actually demand more cardiac output. Remember, this will place more stress on the heart and make the feeling heart feel even faster. So another thing that you need to adjust in this lifestyle is uh, actually adhering to the treatment that you have been put on. Because A, there will be many, many pills to be swallowed of different kinds. And it is important to swallow them at the set time of the day that you have decided to be taking them. For example, if it's a once daily medication and you have chosen the evening and maybe let's say at 9 before bed, then you make it 9 before bed. If you are traveling, then remember it is 9 before bed so you travel with your pills. It is of vital importance to remember to eat a healthy balanced meal in small portions, especially if you have those pressure uh, symptoms caused by ascites or splenomegaly or hepatomegaly. So yes, you're going to stay away from fatty foods, especially saturated fats. This is another part of the diet adjustment. Then we also need to do, uh, uh, you should have, because you have more risk of falling or having falls, it is important to live with someone or be close to people because of something called orthostatic uh, hypotension. This could lead to you having a fall and if you are alone in the house then you could fall and nobody knows that you fell and this could actually be very fatal for you. It could actually mean you lying in the, on the ground for quite a long time before someone is able to do that for you. So the other thing that you do in your lifestyle uh, is adapting a healthy lifestyle and working out as much as you can tolerate. Uh, and with time, as the heart improves, you are able to do a little bit more activity. So the more you are able to do a little bit more activities, the more you are able to build up your body strength and the more you are able to even stay with your 
family and do other activities. So when it comes to the medical management or the pharmaceutical management, pharmacology call management, I have mentioned the pill burden because there are so many types of drugs that you need to put on. And the first one is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors such as lisinopril. Then we have the herbs or the satans, the losatan, the telmisatan, those satans are, are very important. Then we have calcium channel blockers, and this is, for example, uh, nifedipine, that's an important drug and it's very commonly used in Kenya. Then you also need a beta blocker, for example, propranolol, atenolol, then lols, so basically. Uh, you will also need some of these, and the first is for the joxin or cardiac glycosides. So yes, you need that. The other D is for nitroglycerin, and uh, the other D is for diuretics. So diuretics, most likely you will be mixed up, you will not be on one type of diuretics, you will be put on probably potassium wasting and potassium sparing uh, diuretic. So probably you will be put on something like pyrosamide and something like aldactone or spironolactone. This is because you need a lot of this water to be drained, or this excess fluid, uh, you do not want to waste a lot of potassium, uh, but again, you do not want to. You, 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 it, it is okay to lose a little bit of it. So, for your electrolyte to keep being balanced, then most likely they will have a combination of the diuretics that you need on. So, yes, that is a simplified version uh, of cardiac congestive cardiac failure. And if you have any question, you can definitely ask. Uh, you can engage me on the comment section down below. You have any additional information. Remember, this is information that uh, I have read from uh, many, many books and many sources. Uh, and therefore, there is a lot I have left out uh, because I feel you can't exhaust congestive cardiac failure in a single video. Uh, but yes, I have to mention a few important basics. Uh, I can do a part 1, part 2, part 3 and very many parts of this video because there are so many aspects of CCF but then it is important to remember if you have right-sided heart failure the body clock, it rocks the body with fluid if you have left-sided heart failure it fills up your lung with fluid and therefore and left-sided heart failure could lead to right-sided cardiac failure so this could create extra pressure on the body because there will be so much fluid on the peripheral as well as the lungs. And therefore, treatment for congestive cardiac failure is about getting rid of the water. So you will be on diuretics, you will be on a low salt diet, with a, or actually no salt diet because any sodium in the body means water retention. Water retention is what is killing you. So as a patient, you need to stay away from salt or table salt as much as possible. So up until next time, thank you for joining me on this channel. Let us make this channel as interactive as possible. You raise the comment section, uh, comment, like, share, and please subscribe and keep supporting me. Thank you so much. And until we see each other, be intentional in your health-seeking behavior because it is your health and you deserve nothing but the best. Bye.